Hello and a very warm welcome to yet another edition of Simply Electric, where today we will be taking a closer look at the latest release, the brand new Hyundai Santa Fe as a plug-in hybrid. I know many of you have been waiting for this car because it combines the electric world with the combustion engine world and also naturally a lot. Offers plenty of space for five, six or seven people. Today, we want to show you everything in this classic review with a test drive of the brand new Hyundai Santa Fe, introduce it to you, and of course, we're curious how you rate this car. I would say, let's not waste any time. Check again if you're part of the electric driving community. If not, we'd love your support via subscription. And now let's kick off with the brand new Hyundai Santa Fe. And as always, we start from the outside, starting from the front, taking a look at the front section and the new design of the Hyundai Santa Fe. And there he comes, almost powerfully American, doesn't he, Stefan? Seems big, right? Bulky, powerful, yet finely and delicately drawn lines. This indicates that we also have the presence of so-called ventilation details incorporated here. This means you possess the ability to partially close the grill in order to enhance the aerodynamics. Or when we need fresh air, we can just open it, then we're almost headed towards an electric car, right? We have this version as a Blackline edition. You can always identify Blackline by its distinct shiny black finish, beautifully combined with the exterior color, which is in a nice and crisp white. That would definitely be an option I'd really enjoy having. And what's truly brilliant is how they've beautifully integrated the Hyundai H into the sleek daytime running lights. We have full LED headlights, of course, which come with the respective high and low beam functions. That's an especially outstanding story, allowing you to comprehensively illuminate the entire street as well. What's brilliant is, with the black line, it's around the wheel arches, which is also very, very beautifully painted in glossy black. And here's the inside of the wheel wells, and I believe Hyundai is really considering our environment carefully, as the components are essentially crafted from recycled old tires. Smart, huh? Yeah. That's great. That's a good step indeed. On the black line, you've got stylish 20-inch wheels. Stefan, did you find the dimensions? 255. 45. R20 looks incredibly awesome, at least from where I stand, here in this unique spoke design. And for those who might be hoping for something even bigger, I have no doubt they will most certainly find it available within the aftermarket choices. Yes, the wheel arches are somewhat pronounced. Here, too, we have this bulky, powerful look nicely presented in the side silhouette. Here at the rear fender, it stands out again a bit, giving a distinctive look. We have sleek, glossy black frames. There's a beautifully finished surface, likely in matte black, which adds a nice touch. Roof rails are especially crucial when you want to use the roof rack. Additionally, here we have a practical feature built in, so whenever you want to load up the Hyundai Santa Fe, you have a convenient step-up aid to help you. Got startled, Stefan, huh? Oh my goodness, what is he doing now? You are able to lock it securely and tightly from the interior side, making sure absolutely no one catches you by surprise over the car at any time. Of course, it's refueled through the appropriate fuel cap. And what's really awesome is that we've got this angular boxy rear, which almost drops down vertically here. That means we have the utmost loading capacity and really spacious conditions both in the rear and also in the trunk area. We'll take a close look at that together later on. When it comes to the rear end, I'm really not sure. Stefan, would you consider that to be the best side or not? So, please Hyundai, don't take it the wrong way. But for me, it kind of has a bit of a delivery van vibe, shape-wise. Yeah, it could almost be like a bus shape, like a van shape. Only the classic SUV tapers off at the back, either as a coupe or just a little bit. But I just find it chic. And here too, like at the front with the daytime running lights, we also have the Hyundai H integrated into the low beam at the back, then in the tail light. You'll notice this pixel design once more as was implemented previously. Typically, it's crafted consistently in this unique way. I have to say the design is kind of a bean. Yes, it certainly looks stylish. There is also a bonus and a penalty. I can already spot the downside. Yes, it's a truly beautiful, thick and fat shark clasp. They made it extra glossy black once again in the black line to ensure it stands out even more dramatically. But the bonus is that Hyundai has managed to, look, integrate the rear wiper into the rear spoiler here. Oh, that's impressive. So that we have a really nice, clean look here as well. And we definitely have a highlight. We have the rear view camera from the camera system here, and please write in the comments what the camera in the rear spoiler could be for. It is 4.83 meters in length, which makes it significantly shorter than 5 meters. It stands at a height of 1.72 meters. 
The railing is 5 centimeters, so with the roof railing it's 1.77 meters. It is 1.9 meters wide, and with the side mirrors it exceeds 2.10 meters. On the left lane of the highway, I think it's then approximately 2.21 meters in width. Yes, it's a sizable and long wheelbase at 2 meters. 61, and on the left side there's a fuel tank, which I forgot to mention before, that can hold up to 67 liters when completely filled. Before we take a look under the hood, let's start by discussing the overall performance in detail. 186 Kilowatt, 253 PS bei 367 Newtonmetern bringen ihn in 9,3 Sekunden auf 100 und bei 180 kmh endet es. How it's all put together, we are going to find out right here, under the hood, and very nicely as befits a premium car, there are two hood lifters along with some soundproofing. And right here we have the Otto engine, which is the 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder delivering 118 kilowatts and 160 horsepower with a torque of 265 Newton meters. Torque, now you're rightly asking, how are we supposed to get to 253 horsepower? So if we take a look at this classic setup, here we have the engine. Here we have the six-speed gearbox, and then in between we have an electric motor. It has 72 kilowatts and 98 horsepower with an impressive 304 newton meters of torque. That means even when driving purely electrically, it should achieve over 50 kilometers, which we intend to test together later in the driving report. Then we'll also get to experience a substantial amount of power due to the instantly available torque. I think those are great values. If we then take a look at the weight, which is about a good two tons, we'll have to see if that's enough power, right, Stefan? Same weaving. I'd suggest we go ahead and do a thorough hood check to see and hear exactly how a Santa Fe hood sounds. Three, two, one. Full. For the electric motor, we definitely also require the appropriate battery pack. This is situated right here in the rear section of the vehicle and possesses a usable capacity of approximately 13.8 kilowatt hours. That's honestly not really all that great. I was a bit surprised, you might wonder why. Well, consider this. We showed you the Cilio DMI not long ago, which boasted 15.8 kilowatt hours, even with a similar vehicle size. Maybe a little smaller. Um, we showed you the Great Wall Motors V05, which even had 39 kilowatt hours battery. And even the new VW derivatives and the new Mercedes derivatives, they all have between 25 and 30 kilowatt hours. And that's quite low, even the Porsche Cayenne offers more. Which is also a bit lacking, Hyundai, I have to include you in the critique here, is that all other manufacturers are now going for three phase 11 kilowatts, while the Santa Fe is charged at 3.6 kilowatts. It's kind of like an elevated socket. I find the charging speed somewhat disappointing because, of course, many people also want to use the plug-in hybrid to go shopping frequently. It would be quite efficient to make good use of the pause when the car is parked and we're inside the supermarket to simply recharge the battery, don't you think? Yes, it works. At dry, comma, sex kilowatt, that's almost pointless as it charges for five hours. Yeah, sometimes a tank doesn't need to shop. And what all the other derivatives have now as well is the CCS connection, meaning a fast charging capability somewhere. The BYD falls a bit short with 18 kilowatts, but the VW derivatives, the Mercedes variants, the Porsche Cayenne, can all charge at 50 to 60 kilowatts like the Great Wall Motors Way 05 at 50 kilowatts. And I truly believe Hyundai could have easily opted to give it more charging power, because we all really wish for such an SUV to be driven as much as possible in electric mode as a plug-in hybrid, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Yeah, go ahead and feel free to write in the comments section how you view the charging capacity and the battery size overall. Let's open up the rear hood and take a closer look to see just how much volume and space the trunk actually offers. First, we need to differentiate. If we have the five seat bench variant, we have a luggage volume of 712 liters. That's pretty great, huh? That's good, yes. We have the six seater model. Optionally, there's a seven seater where the two individual seats in the second row become a bench seat. And then you have around 628 liters of space available. But of course, this is only the case if the third row of seats is not in the upright position. We've set them up for you so you can take a look. Unfortunately, Hyundai didn't give any detailed information here. I'd estimate about 250 to 300 liters when it's maximally loaded. Does that sound right, Stefan? Yes, but not much more. Exactly, then we have all sorts of stuff here, which we'll just put aside for now. I've already gone ahead and prepared the parcel shelf for you, so that's certainly available as well. And unfortunately, I'm lacking a suitable method to store it in the car. 
because as you'll see very soon, we really don't have a whole lot of options or space here to store our various belongings away neatly. That means we have a net here, we have the towing hooks here, we have the tire set and the compressor to go with it. And that's more or less it. So we're really kind of missing a larger compartment here where we could easily tuck away the parcel shelf. A big car with so little space. You can easily fold down the third row backrest, giving ample extra space for your belongings and any other items on your journey. And so we arrive at the total of 628 liters, and you can practically picture placing the parcel shelf in here, pulling it back and securing it appropriately behind. With the second seating row, which features three seats, you have just one continuous bench. The reason for the partition net is so you can stretch it behind to ensure that no objects suddenly fly from the trunk to the front of the car. Additionally, you have the option to do this electrically as well, which is quite convenient. Here again, the backrests of the individual seats. They are also electrically adjustable, which is why the backrest also moves forward electrically. Pretty neat, right? So you can fold it down so nicely. And above all, you can also pleasantly spend time just sitting there watching it. It's tons of fun. We always do it in one take, right? And then you have almost 2,000 liters, specifically 1,900 something. If you have the five seater, you can of course also fold the rear, fold down the rear seats, and you even have over 2,000 liters of storage space. And now we're coming back to what I mentioned earlier. That's practically at the level of a van. A whole lot can fit inside there. Well, I would say that if you're thinking about getting a van, you might actually find that the Santa Fe provides a slightly better compromise because we can sit quite comfortably here. Exactly, which you can certainly do in a van as well, I didn't mean to imply otherwise. With just a single press, it effortlessly and smoothly folds right back in a completely automatic and electric manner. That's of course a nice feature. You also have the option, we'll show you that later, to move the seats forward and backward, and then you have the opportunity here also to adjust the rear backrest. This can be done in different positions. That means you can quite easily transform this into a very comfortable reclined seat. We'll definitely be testing to see if Ollie can sit comfortably in the back or not, right here together with you in just a moment. Let me take a slightly wild guess. Automatic shut. Because it opens up electrically, which is a really nice feature. Very smooth indeed. I also hope it comes with a soft close function for added convenience. Just take a look. Isn't that super awesome? If these up to 2,000 liters of space inside aren't sufficient for your needs, you naturally have the option to easily mount a roof rack on this beautiful roof rail, allowing you to transport up to 100 kilograms on the roof. There's also an optional tow bar available, and I was quite impressed with, somewhat surprised, honestly. You have 750 kilograms unbraked, which isn't surprising, but the braked capacity is only one ton and 10 kilograms, which is notable. That's not much. That's somehow really not much. I would have expected it to be around 1.8, 2 tons, or perhaps even 2.5 tons, especially since many people want to use those larger SUVs to perhaps pull a few horses, a sizable RV, or maybe even the speedboat. And naturally, a ton and 10 kilograms aren't exactly thrilling. That's not the end of the world. Yes, there are also two full hybrids, one with front-wheel drive and one with all-wheel drive, our vehicle is also equipped with all-wheel drive via a drive shaft, where the rear axle is provided with additional power. That's then 1.1 tons. It is truly not the very end. Yeah, I couldn't really find the nose weight. I'd estimate it to be 75 kilograms to 100 kilograms. Feel free to write it in the comments if you know exactly. We have shown you everything on the outside. Let's move inside. And first, we'll take a look at the double glazing. It's very, very nice. Later, we want to measure the interior noise with you and see how it mm, hopefully positively affects the interior sound. Yes, what is a bit of a pity is that when the car is at a standstill, you noticed the engine suddenly starts. Yes, why actually? Yeah, I didn't fully grasp that either, but just for now, I've gone ahead and switched it off once more. Up here is essentially a type of plastic material, which looks like faux leather, yet it's not actual faux leather, featuring a double seam. Then we have here, everything's ringing again, and that's also kind of a bit stupid. Here we have something resembling a carbon look. It appears to be brushed aluminum, which it could very well be, and I find it incredibly chic. Then we have seat memory, featuring a nice padded cushion here. It's done in faux leather, and it definitely feels good to the touch. 
Window controls and mirror adjustment are included. Here the material is harder plastic but softly padded underneath for added comfort and a more pleasant touch. We've got the optional Bose sound system here. We will listen to how it sounds a bit later on. In these pockets, I really miss materials like leather, felt, or even some carpeting to ensure that absolutely nothing rustles or clatters around. I'd say come on inside Stefan, let's have a look at the interior. Inside, we have a beautifully crafted dashboard where our intention is to proceed chronologically. Up here we have the head-up display, which boasts a decent size, being nicely projected onto the windshield and providing us with all the essential information we need. Here in the center we have the 12.3 inch driver display, which gives us all the essential information we need, encompassing additional support in conjunction with the head-up display. In the field of navigation, we can adjust the steering wheel in height and distance. We have a very, very nice steering wheel here. I think it's tastefully designed. It feels very smooth and I believe it's faux leather, but it genuinely feels like Napa leather. We have haptic buttons with rockers and rotary dials, which you can use while driving, so to speak, blindly after a certain familiarization period. Here we have this particular element again, which appears to be like brushed black aluminum. I must say, I really like it. We have the blinker lever, the wiper lever, and the drive mode selector below. We're already quite accustomed to that design from Hyundai. It's simply a very big, chunky control knob. Feel free to write in the comments how you see it. It doesn't bother me now. The start-stop has moved from this knob here inside to over there now. It looks a little bit simplistic. The carbon structure extends further down here. Above that, it is also gently curved towards the driver as well. The 12.3 inch infotainment display, which in my opinion comes with a solid and capable processor built in, allowing you to smoothly and easily zoom in and out of content on the screen, which I find works quite effectively and efficiently. We significantly enhance the shortcut keys here, which I find truly fantastic, especially with the smooth volume control knob. We have the ability to switch here between the map and media functions, and we can go directly into setup mode, allowing us to easily find the various menu options available. So that's everything. I must say, I find it absolutely fantastic and really well executed. Yes, and then right here we have the control for the air conditioning, which combines a touch interface with a display. It's a very smart and sleek design. That means we have the optional seat ventilation in three levels. We have the seat heating in three levels. I think that's well done. We have a driver only function. We have the steering wheel heating included here. Also in two stages then, I think that's great too. And we can control the ventilation manually here, or of course also through the auto function, then in three distinct stages and three different speeds, also through auto. Very nice. And then here with the rotary wheel, I find everything brilliant. Yes, otherwise we have the auto hold function here. You're surely familiar with being at a traffic light, avoiding rolling in crawl mode. Here we can easily switch between the eco, sport, my drive modes and smoothly toggle back and forth. And we also have when we press that, the terrain mode. That's always important in an SUV where we have snow. Mud and sand can be controlled separately again. With a push, it switches back to Eco, Sport or My Drive. With My Drive, you can decide for yourself. We have the EV, HEV button. This means you can drive purely electrically to work, school or shopping with a range of up to 54 kilometers. This comes from the LiDAR battery pack with just 13.8 kilowatt hours. Or naturally, you can also drive it in a hybrid mode if you then adjust accordingly. Want to drive with the support of the combustion engine and then the car basically decides when to use the combustion engine and when not. Yes, we have two really nice inductive charging surfaces here. This is precisely how it works for both drivers and passengers alike. We've got nice USB-C ports here. By the way, we've also got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And it showcases a great display here to indicate whether the battery is being charged. You also have the option with one of the USB ports, you can decide if you just want to charge or if you wish to also use it as a USB interface for infotainment. Yes, then there's the UVC light feature. Stefan, can you explain what this UV light is? Yes, indeed, it's located up here in a special compartment where you have the possibility to connect UV lights in order to disinfect your mobile phone or various items, for example. Personally, I think that's creatively and thoughtfully designed, just like up here. This faux leather here at the front, that's the plastic again with decorative stitching. Located in the middle are the air vents, but they are made of hard plastic material. Hyundai surprise, yes. It's really not the case. Cool is the ambient light, right? Nice in the doors too. That looks good too. Yes, that really looks absolutely amazing. Let's get back on track. We did get a bit distracted by the UV light. 
We have two spacious cup holders here, and it's quite likely that two large bottles could theoretically fit comfortably in them. And then you have here again, of course, another large storage compartment with lighting to store a bunch of stuff, which is nicely done. Again, covered with this beautiful faux leather, and I think I have a very, very nice ergonomics here. Um, a look through the passenger door shows you again very nicely, of course, the design here. They have maximized the space, meaning you have a second level again with a 12 volt socket where Mr's small bag fits where a lady's small purse fits in. Therefore, in my opinion, everything makes optimal use of the available space. We have a glove compartment here, which unfortunately isn't lined inside with felt or anything like that. I might have wished for that. And we have this kind of hammer here, probably to break through a window if, you know, something happens which we all hope won't. Nevertheless, ended up in a crash. What I definitely really appreciate are the leather seats in this vehicle. That's nicely done. They're perforated with both seat heating and ventilation. What I miss is the massage function. Okay, just think about the Kia EV9, which had that feature as well. It was actually quite pleasant. You even made use of that once, Stefan. That's right. The seats are extremely well shaped and comfortable. That means we have maximum support in the lumbar area. What might be missing a bit are shoulder pads. There's a slight interruption there. We have a nice comfort headrest here, which we can also adjust in distance. And down here, we have a nice long seat cushion. And then you optionally have the relax seat function here, where you can basically adjust the front part into a relaxed position. You know how it is. Recline back the seat, kick back, relax, and maybe even take a refreshing power nap to recharge. You also have the possibility to adjust the seat right here. That can be really quite handy if you're being driven and you feel like you need a little bit more freedom and comfort. However, it's also really quite nice because the driver then has the option to adjust the seat from this position right here. What I really like, by the way, is this Alcantara roof lining. It extends elegantly all the way down the A-pillar in a very pleasing manner. This Alcantara is nicely fluffy, Stefan. Yeah, it's great. I don't even know if it's Alcantara or a carpet, but it feels like Alcantara. Yes, yeah, sort of. A single thing. What I lack, our subject doesn't have, I hope that's optional then, would be like a huge panorama glass sliding roof. Yes. There is surely plenty of space for that. Exactly. And more natural light might be able to find its way into this specific space here. We want to do the sitting test in the back with you. First, Stefan, we want to take a look, of course. Take a look at how much space there is here. Observe how it smoothly slides forward to access the third row. Quite impressive, isn't it? Yeah, nice. That means I can gracefully swing myself right into this spot here. Ow, 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 ow. You know, it's always quite a bit of a hassle with my weight of 99.9 .9 kilos. But finally, there we go, right? Yes, he's sitting there. So he's got long limbs at 1,85 meters. But theoretically, for a short piece, Stefan, it works. I think so too. And seriously, even considering the height, I've got plenty of headroom here. I'm six feet, one inch tall. Over here, I've got some cup holders. Also in the back, there's actually a third zone dedicated for climate control. That means we basically have four, five zones. If you want, it's kind of cool, right? I have USB-C ports here. So I have to say, I'm feeling great. For a short route, it's definitely fine. Now we have to figure out how to get me out of here, right? Look, the seat moves forward. Certainly, I believe I'll save you the crawling out part. Once again, for your better illustration. Six Fuß und 81 Zentimeter, 99,9 Kilogramm schwer. And that's what's cool here. Look, I can just swing in casually. And that is indeed brilliantly designed. Back here in the second row, I genuinely have plenty of space. With the individual seats, there's a nice armrest in the center, but I personally prefer a center armrest. Yes, it's still kind of fluffy, but you have the chance if you basically take the five-seater or seven-seater, then with the continuous rear row. Yes, Stefan will show you again. You have electric seat adjustment, which is really very nice on the individual seats. That's a great feature, but it also comes with a price as our test model here is priced around 68,000 euros with the equipment. So almost 69 grand. And that's naturally quite decent then indeed. Yeah, let's take another closer look at the backs of the rear seats. We basically have some coat hooks here. We have a Apartment here where we can store something behind but this is hard plastic here here it is again this leather faux leather we then have a compartment here that we can open where we have a nice storage space to put things away and look Stefan I can fold down the center armrest here sure it's nice that's also really great I have my USB-C port right here it's the same on the opposite side as well 
And that's actually a truly amazing story, especially when you drive it like Americans do in one of those mega SUVs. I've got an enormous amount of space here. That's obviously great, yeah. And now comes the absolute kicker, Stefan. We have two child Isofix points in the third row. In the front row of seats, we have two Isofix points available. And what about on the passenger seat? No, they aren't available there. This indicates that there is a child Isofix option available here, making it suitable for a total of four individuals. I have to say, it's quite a spacious vehicle that truly feels much larger inside than its actual length of 4.83 meters would suggest. So remember the vehicles we looked at that were 5 meters and over 5 meters long? That's fantastic. Also here with the headroom and the space available on the side here. I have to say, Hyundai has done an impressive and excellent job maximizing every inch of the space inside the Santa Fe. Yes, I do believe it's actually roomier than its predecessor. We've shown you everything both inside and outside. Now we want to experience it, the 253 horsepower in the just over 2.2 tons. Let's move on to the driving review. And as usual, we start with the turning circle. It's crucial since the Santa Fe has a turning radius of 11.4 meters. 11.4 meters at 4.8 meters vehicle length. Have to say, Stefan is tidy, isn't he? It's fine, yeah. How's it look if I drive around you? Very chic, very dynamic, sporty as always. It's fun, isn't it? With an 11.40 meters turning circle, it's extremely practical and convenient, allowing you to make tight and precise turns with ease whenever necessary. Equally important as the turning circle of 11 meters 40 is indeed having a reliable and high quality 360 degree camera system which you can definitely expect to find as an optional feature in the Santa Fe model. That means we want to simulate for you how we park here. He certainly also has a parking assistant. Again, optional for selection. It tends to take a bit too long for me. Then we also have the possibility to very, very nicely move three-dimensionally um, around the car and even have a top view. That's always kind of stylish, and you also have the convenient option to switch the camera to a top view, which is particularly important with a trailer, or even utilize a 180 degree angle for a broader perspective. When you're driving out of a tight exit, you can see the rims here. But this constant mumbling really annoys me. Yes, at one day. What's nice about it is that you have the front camera with the guideline in case you're ever unsure where the car is steering. That was fun just now, somehow always amusing, but stay on here because a Cupra is coming from the right. Look at how quickly and how early you can see it through this 180 degree angle. And that's why I always appreciate it when you're driving out of an exit or an entrance. Then it really is always super practical. What I really like about an SUV is the raised seating position, giving you such a great view. By the way, in this area, we have a depth of about 17.7 centimeters for the mud. Absolutely. We can drive through small streams by car. It's really just a bit raised, you know? Yeah, a bit elevated. I think that's also why many choose an SUV, because it's like sitting on a throne. Yes, correct. Gliding gently above it all. Exact, sorta. Even though I'm typically more of a car driver and prefer sitting low, yeah. But I have to tell you, in the busy city center, I really enjoy it because you're right there mingling with all the pedestrians. Cyclists really get a wonderful view. You also find that here in the Santa Fe. But if you look back, Stefan, the C-pillar has nice big windows. Yeah. You can look out nicely. And if that's still not quite enough, just look over here at this digital rear view mirror we have. That's the resolution of the camera. Quite a few of you guessed it correctly in the comments section. In the rear edge spoiler. That means you can switch here between digital and analog. What I find isn't everyone's cup of tea either. Exactly, the digital rear view mirror kind of zooms in a bit, rather like using a slight telephoto lens. Offers a different perspective compared to the analog version. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments and let us know whether you are on team digital or team analog. Find him okay? Yes, I genuinely believe that as well. Indeed, that certainly needs to be filled up with music first, and the larger sound system absolutely does a pretty decent job overall. If additional mid-range comes through now, it might become significantly stronger, right? Yeah, that's cool. And if the bass comes in too, it'll be quite nice, right? Certainly. That'd be quite nice too. So it's definitely premium sound, right? Yes. 
it's definitely possible to avoid that. Yet I think for plenty of audiophile individuals, that's as, uh, there could potentially be even more. I think so too. Because when you turn it up, it really reaches its limits, especially with those clear highs. Because for example, I know it's a different price range, but like a Burmester sound system in a Porsche. It truly is another level entirely. Five to six kilos roughly in additional cost. Of course. So from that perspective, I think the Bose sound system is a good choice in the Hyundai Santa Fe. I don't even know if you've noticed, we're driving fully electric the entire time. Yes, very nice. In a plug-in hybrid vehicle, it's nicely quiet and wonderfully calm, and I really appreciate that aspect quite a lot. It's absolutely a lot of fun, for sure. Now, we absolutely and certainly want to take a look together with you at how the Highway Drive Assist system functions. So, included in the package here, we've got the Adaptive Cruise Control System. Additionally, there's the Steering Assistant, as well as the Lane Keeping Assistant, which actually, when it identifies and recognizes the highway appropriately, I feel like it hadn't quite caught on. Ah, now it has recognized it. There's the HDA. Certainly, and where he can, of course, adjust and modify the driving speed according to the specific speed limit. So, from that perspective, I truly believe he is indeed extremely well prepared. In order to be able to assist you to partially support autonomous driving on long distances. And we've just been working with Hyundai's fully electric variants, and especially Kia, as Kia is part of the Hyundai Motor Group, had great results too. Yeah. To be quite honest, we've never been let down by it, have we? Exactly. That means it holds very, very nicely in the middle of the lane, as you can see here. Even when there's a construction site or another marking, namely an orange one, he identifies those markers, integrates them through his cutting-edge camera system, and modifies the center of the lane as needed, even with such a large, robust and massive SUV, much like the one we currently have right here. Yes, in the construction zone, it doesn't recognize the usual speed limits, then the advised speed, meaning it detected 80, should now go to 100, which it didn't do. That might be another point of criticism, dear Hyundai friends, that your traffic sign recognition, there was just 100, doesn't work perfectly. Now it's unrestricted, so let's check if it picks it up this time. Now it has successfully recognized it, which implies we basically need to adjust the car's speed to what is appropriate for the road. Let's just go with 100 kilometers per hour. And even here, I think it holds the center of the lane very, very nicely. And especially this steering wheel, I also find it an optical arc. Absolutely really chic. Let's measure the interior noise level with you at 50 kilometers per hour. The measurement shows it's between 58 and 59 decibels, meaning it's very quiet inside. Now let's go ahead and accelerate to 70 to see how the noise level changes. 60, 61 decibels. It's nice and quiet there too. Let's accelerate to 100 with you to see how it is at 100. The engine joins in there too. 65, 66 decibels. So uh, I must say it's very well insulated, right? Especially with double glazing. And even though the combustion engine seamlessly kicked in, it's impressively quiet in the background. It's really well encapsulated there too. That suggests, on the one hand, naturally with the insulation in the hood, but then also surely here inside the car's interior as well. Well, Hyundai also knows how to build comfortable interiors. Because I feel here as a driver, Stefan, if you just pan out here, we're kind of tailing closely behind. So they crashed into trucks. Uh, I just find this dashboard awesome. Feels like I'm in one of those amazing American super SUVs, don't you think? Yeah, that already looks good. Especially since you also look a bit at the hood in front. I think that's somewhat intentional from Hyundai because a target market, of course, is North America. Hyundai has been very, very successful with the Santa Fe. Knowing Americans, they always want everything to be bigger. It has to be bigger, bigger, and bigger. Sure, especially when combined with the 12-inch bicycle display and head-up display, the curve is really nicely integrated as well. It's indeed the latest-gen head-up display. Connected with Apple CarPlay Wireless. Nice, right? Yes. Really very nice. That's indeed quite good. Because many of you might genuinely enjoy using Google Maps for navigation purposes, since it includes some of the most reliable and best real-time traffic data available, at least in my opinion. And yes, so from there, you definitely have the opportunity to easily mirror your favorite apps into the Hyundai through the smartphone integration feature. Yes, otherwise, you also have the navigation system, which is on board here, which I believe leaves nothing to be desired and which you can also can be tremendously useful for planning your routes in detail. 
So you'll have to make a decision on whether you prefer using the navigation from the mirrored smartphone or directly from the Hyundai Santa Fe's integrated system. We need to talk about the vehicle weight. 2.2 tons. Now, those 186 kilowatts, 253 horsepower actually sound like decent power at first, right? I kind of feel like I've experienced this before with the electric drive, that it could have been a tad more powerful, or, you know, it really could have delivered a bit more oomph. And especially during those moments of continuous acceleration, when the combustion engine joins in, it seemed a bit sluggish to me, lacking the punch I expected. So we want to demonstrate a kick down here for you all. I'll switch over to sport mode to ensure it delivers peak performance. And Stefan will do a manually shifted small count for you here, manually shifted, followed by a demonstration with a nice little car. And then we'll really get started with the full experience. Seid ihr bereit dazu? 3, 2, 1, jetzt geht's endlich los. Here we go and you can feel it quickly take off. In kickdown it accelerates to 70, da, jumps to 90 and reaches 100. And then we'll do a brake check, there's no one behind us. Wow, they grip really well. They are good. Wow, holy moly. So we have 0.100, yet it's more like about 9.46. Aha, uh -huh. I have to tell you, you need to get into sports. That was my mistake because we were in the ECO. Sure, as usual. We drive efficiently here. Do you know what I miss? What we usually drive. The comfort mode. That means you have Eco, Sport and My Drive. And the Eco mode is genuinely Eco. Eco is indeed Eco. After that he continues to drive straight. Exactly, then he rolls. And in Sport mode, he really pushed those 2.2 tons, didn't he? He did well with that. Especially the brake works really well, so... Folks, the Hyundai Santa Fe brake system. So don't go doing that. Obviously, then you have to break, but isn't it fun after breakfast, right? I just don't think so. Maybe the egg moves up a bit. Well, I have to say that packs a punch, but it has to, because of course Hyundai also builds very, very safe cars. Yes, absolutely, definitely. Where the Hyundai Santa Fe also makes a really, really strong impression is when driving on the country road. By the way, she still didn't recognize the signal for 100, and now she's rattling along at 70, even though it's 100 here. That's quite odd indeed. Let's take a moment to discuss the ride comfort. I think it has a nice, firm yet comfortable suspension, leaning towards a more smooth ride. Yes indeed, it's quite comfortable to sit in here. And when we change lanes a bit here, it also has slight swaying movements. So it's definitely not vague now, that's not the case. Now it's back to 70 here again, we have to reduce a bit. One can clearly sense that they really aim to reach a suitable compromise. Yes, why? However, to also obtain comparable values, we consistently have Stefan's standard for measuring ride comfort on board, specifically Stefan's buttometer. Yes, and it feels comfortable here. I'm jumping right in. So I'm sitting here nice and comfy. The seats are great. Having the option to adjust the seating area here is really great, making it incredibly cozy and comfy. Chassis, yeah. I think it's also a bit due to the construction form that it has a bit of that wall movement. It's not spongy. No, I must admit I really like it quite a lot. In some areas it might be considered a bit too soft for certain preferences. However, that's definitely also a bit due to the typical build and structure of an SUV. But it's fun. You can still have some fun taking a few corners with it, right? Sure, exactly. Let me show you the one thing I really don't like. It's when I decide to raise the temperature right here. That means, for example, if I set it to approximately 24 or even to 25 degrees, it doesn't activate purely through electrical means, but rather utilizes the available heat instead. I can't show you that right now because I need to let the engine run and it has a temperature. However, earlier we clearly observed it when we started off from cold. Exactly. The internal combustion engine started operating to supply necessary heating. Exactly, just like I set it to 22 degrees which in turn means that if you're basically setting off in winter, you can't drive on electric power only because you always need the engine to heat the interior. So, and I find that a bit disappointing because other types of plug-in hybrids manage to solve that issue too. They even have advanced preconditioning systems enabling them to cool and heat the vehicle, particularly in the winter, entirely using the high 400 volt system of the battery pack. Absolutely, certainly indeed. I think it's usually found in many Asian vehicles, often regarded as a hallmark of Asian design. Perhaps consider Hyundai as a possible idea to manage. I'm not sure, perhaps a heat pump, whatever, he might have that. But the idea is that it can not only cool, but it can also heat. 
so that when you start off in colder conditions, doesn't require the engine to heat up the interior, then it's a pity to drive out of the garage in a petrol car. That's certainly something you want to completely avoid witnessing. Now let us proceed to the comprehensive final overview of the Hyundai Santa Fe. It is absolutely a genuinely remarkable vehicle. Visually, I have to say, an absolute wow from the outside. I really like it. I also find this distinctive rear somehow awesome. Yes, as I said before, I remember now what it reminds me of. Just think of the old T3 models. In its shape, it is gently rounded on top and closes a bit. I thought it was chic then. Leave a comment to let us know if Stefan is right about his T3 and if it truly looks identical. I think it's well done on the outside. I also find the interior extremely well done. Sure, in some areas like the dashboard, I would have preferred a bit less plastic, but somehow all car manufacturers are following this trend at the moment. But otherwise, I think they've put a lot of effort and attention to detail, especially with the ambient lighting and the infotainment. It's all ergonomically designed, so you can tell I'm an absolute. Expertise might perceive it as somewhat narrow, particularly around the chest area. But this could also partly be due to our preferences, as we predominantly drive purely electric vehicles. That's just this immediate torque, that instant punch. So, to be honest, the electric motor here in the plug-in hybrid is a bit overwhelmed with the weight of 2.2 tons. Yeah, there's a bit too little power for that. When the engine engages in sport mode, you witnessed it really move ahead. But I would say 9 point something seconds is honestly a bit of a joke for an electric SUV, isn't it? Yeah, basically, he breezes by, right? Sure! So, from that perspective, I believe the combination of 253 horsepower is more than enough for everyday use. For those ambitious drivers who are truly focused on performance and speed, it might feel somewhat unsatisfying or a bit lacking, wouldn't you agree? That's the charming word for it. Um, feel free to write in the comments how you see it. I believe that you can drive this car very efficiently. I would have wished it had a larger battery pack because these 13.8 kilowatt hours seem a bit limited for 2024, soon going to 2025. Almost half too small so I would have hoped for an electric range of 100, 120 kilometers here. Yeah, at least 100 kilometers would have been nice. Then he would have been able to easily keep pace with a Porsche Cayenne and various other plug-in hybrid cars, even though they might cost a bit more. VW Tiguan, like the Way 05 here, they're all in the same price bracket, approximately around 60,000 euros. For instance, there's a Way 05 with a 39 kilowatt hour battery, and you can prove in 140 kilometers. Certainly. So, and that's why, like Stefan says, 100 kilometers would be, I think, the minimum. To me, Hyundai surely falls short when you consider it within the year 2024. It's just low at dry pump sex. We want to encourage people to embrace fully electric vehicles and make using them a part of their everyday lives. We're essentially taking away their opportunity to fully recharge the battery while they're on a one to two hour shopping trip. So that conflicts. And then I think there's also a lack of Maybe the CCS connector with 50 kilowatt hours so you can just fully recharge the battery again in half an hour while traveling to be able to make better and more effective use of the electric power as well. So I'm really curious and interested to see how you all evaluate the new Hyundai Santa Fe. I think it's a visually appealing car. The suspension and driving experience are good, even if it's not a race car. So I'm curious, what will you write in the comments? Let us know what you think about the new Hyundai Santa Fe. And with that, we finally reached the conclusion of today's video featuring the Hyundai Santa Fe as a plug-in hybrid model. I hope you really enjoyed watching the video. Please give it a thumbs up. Please check again if you are part of the Einfahrer Elektrisch community. We would be delighted if you supported us with a subscription. That way you won't miss videos like this in the future. Stay healthy and we'll catch up soon. Yours, Oli, how do you feel about the design? I think it's really chic. Yes, it's really pretty too. And because everything is down here, it all gets nicely pulled down. From the back, it doesn't look that tall at all. And then especially with the taillights here with the Hyundai hair. They've really done a nice job, I have to say.